Miles and Kilo is the game. It is published by Four Horses and developed by Mike Burns. Uh, it was released on the 22nd of March 2019, so it's relatively new. It has a price point of $7.99 US or $11.95 Australian. It is a platformer, according to TA, and I'd agree with that. Yep, me too. So it is a... Uh, the plot, it, you, you, the plot of the game is you're flying your plane, um, and then I hit the skip button. Your plane gets struck by lightning. That's what I imagined happened. The lightning was uh, directed at your plane by the final boss of the okay. game. Yeah, so I'll, you were, you were attacked in your plane. Yes, and you crash onto the These island, islands. island, and you need to yeah. find the parts scattered around the island... It yep. makes it sound like it's open world. It's not a side-scrolling platformer. It's a side-scrolling platformer. Yep. But at the end of each world, you get a, you a fight part a boss. back. Yeah, you fight a boss who plane. has a part, one of the parts, and you get it back off him. Yes. So we, we briefly mentioned the gameplay. It's essentially a side-scrolling platformer. Um, you run from left to right. You can throw fruit. You can jump, pick up coins, jump on the heads of enemies. Um, there are spikes. There are... Later, there are things that throw stuff at you. There is yeah. small obstacles like that. Fireballs um, coming up from everywhere and yeah. falling from the sky. Yeah. You just need to get to the end, essentially. So it, the, the gameplay is simple enough, but I think I feel like they mix it up with the obstacles and the timing of stuff that it's not. it doesn't feel repetitive and boring. So um, essentially, what you can do is... And there is a. I've learnt now. There's an auto run option in the main menu. That just, <laughs> you're, you're welcome. <laughs> well, I, I don't, and I don't know if that was in because I played it pre-release. Because I got a code from the developer, who's a great bloke. Um, but I played it pre-release. I'm not sure if that option was in there, but I, I never used it, so I couldn't say for sure. Um, essentially, if you just keep running to the right, you can time everything. So. Mm -hmm. Everything. I don't know if it's to the beat of the music either, but I did enjoy the music. It's nice. Um, but you can. So your your timing of your jumps will always be the same every single run, and you will never you will never be in a situation where you have to stop. Everything can be avoided, either by jumping over it or like rolling through it or underneath it or throwing, throwing the fruit. The at the right fruit. Time. Yeah. yeah, everything can be done with that timing of constantly running right which you'll need to do to get an S rank because you need to hit under a certain time, a par time. Um, there are occasionally levels where you are joined by your dog and you hang on to his lead and he just automatically runs and he has a different set of moves where he can target and dive at an enemy to sort of boost him. Um, mm. So that, that mixes it up as well. It's, just, it's honestly just really quite good, fun gameplay. And, and as I said before, it doesn't feel repetitive. If you if you are an achievement hunter, it's going to cause you some dramas. But this game has got is a very fun game. Uh, it's fun if you just want to pick up a game, play a platformer, and have a great challenge. But it's also fun if you just want to pick up a game, run through the levels, and have have fun. You don't care about the achievements. So I feel like this game's kind of got something in there for everyone. Uh, I. I will not be getting all the achievements and uh, I've I've enjoyed my time with it, that's for sure. Yeah, so um, speaking of the achievements, there's one for completing each of the worlds, each of the five worlds, um, for S-ranking all the levels, um, some, some miscellaneous stuff, completing a level without killing any enemies, uh, completing a level without throwing any fruit, killing every enemy in a level, that sort of stuff. There are then the time attack worlds, uh, levels, sorry. So that is essentially, um, I mean, it's kind of, it's a time attack mode. You're trying to set the best time, but no, the time doesn't matter for any of the achievements. Um, you need to complete that mode, complete it with less than 10 deaths, or, and complete a single level within the mode with less than one death. Um, but you can just back out of time attack, go practice the level in the normal mode a few times, then come back to it, do that level, practice the next one, complete it, practice the next one, so on and so forth. You don't need to make any par times or anything, so you can...
be as slow as you want you can go up and wait for an enemy to to fly off the screen before you proceed further it's it's probably not as difficult as it sounds until you get towards those final levels um one thing i did notice when i revisited the game for the review is that the bosses were made easier than i re i recall i mean i played it back in march so i could be off my rocker but i know for a fact that the second boss was more difficult when i played it originally because that's where I, I would lose a lot of lives on that second boss because his layout for his level was a lot more difficult than it is now i also didn't realize you can just throw fruit at the boomerang yeah, yeah, that took me a long time. I was always trying to jump over those I, boomerangs. I did jump them. I jumped him. Yeah. Yeah, but no, you can just throw... Which, I mean, if you're getting an S rank, you will need to jump over them because you have to have five All fruit five remaining. Fruits. Yeah. Um, but I think this is a really fun game. I think for $12 Australian, 8 bucks American, this is a ridiculously good buy. Um, the completion estimate for the game currently sits on the site at three to four hours i would say if you are very good at platformers you could do it in that time most people are probably going to be in that five to six eight to ten hour range i would think maybe not eight to ten unless you're really bad but i would say time attack is where you're going to get stuck trying to get through that without with yeah. less than 10 deaths but s ranking every level the time attack with less than 10 deaths. Um, they're probably the two big ones in the yeah. game. But there's uh, it's, worth, it's worth mentioning, uh, I actually found when I went back to this game, because I played it early, early in July, and even at the end of June, uh, the, there was an update released on, the f I think, the 4th of July from what I was reading on Twitter. They added uh, a dragon fruit at the start of the game. At the start of the game, at the start of each level, if you die like five or ten times on the same level, it'll appear there. You can pick it up, and it means you can't be killed by enemies. You can't be killed by spikes or projectiles. You can only die by uh, falling, falling into the lava or falling into the water and dying. Uh, it will negate the fact uh, of getting any rank for the level. You'll just get a dragon fruit rank, which doesn't count to anything, but it will help you get through... It helped me get through the final world. Um, so yeah, that was an update that was recently released to make it a little bit easier because the, the game is uh, very tricky. Yeah, it, it certainly can be. It's one. It's, it's very much a memorization, so remembering the patterns yeah. of how you need to do things. But uh, overall, I would, I would definitely say people should buy this game. I think it's, yeah, if you're not too interested in the achievements, if you just want to play a fun game, it is definitely worth the price of admission at full price. Uh, I was fortunate that I won a, a contest, I think it was from Achievement Hunting 101, which, yeah, actually, I think Rocker Dude messaged me the code when I won. So I won, uh, won it from them, and I was like, oh, okay, what's what's this game all about? Um, but, yeah, I think the the price of admission is, is very fair, and there's a lot of... A lot of game to be had there, especially if you are going to spend the time to get the completion. Yeah. And uh, on that note, you can hear what Warren want, had to say about the game right now. Miles and Kilo. What a, what a strange game, I gotta say. Anyone who knows me knows that platformers are just not my thing. Uh, whether it be the persistent attempts of doing the same thing over and over that just gets me frustrated, flustered, however you want to phrase it. I'm not sure if it's if it's that or the fact that there's just kind of that one single-minded attempt that you have to do every time to get through the game. But that brings us to Miles and Gilo. It's not the same. I mean, is it the pixel art? No, I mean, there, there's lots of pixel art games out there, and it, I'm not a huge fan of it. it. There's definitely some good implementations. Is it the dog? I don't think it's the dog. It's definitely a different element, and I, you wouldn't believe how much I laughed when the game turned into, like, Sled Dog 101. But no, I've been trying to rack my head to figure out why do I actually enjoy this more than the average platformer. And what I ended up with was somehow these Super Mario-esque elements of tossing fruit have muddled my brain into thinking it's not my mortal enemy. 
D- does that mean I have any hope of completing this, though? Yeah, not a chance. Uh, <laughs> it's still a platformer. Um, but still, where I'll usually put a platformer down in frustration, this one actually gives me reason to try again. Um, and, and that's different. I, I think it's the unique way that developers also design their game. You know, I, I've put almost almost two hours now working on the amphibious achievement, which is for completing level 1-6 without surfing. And although it's the exact same thing every single time, I just can't quite get it into my memory. But I keep trying, and I guess these different elements about the game is kind of what, again, it confuses me into thinking it's not really an adventure. It's it's a side-scrolling adventure that you can't stop or something. I don't know. So if you're like me and you're leery of the platformer genre tag, I'd say give this one a shot. Give Milo's and Kilo a shot. And save a dog or two while you're making fruit smoothies out of your enemies.